Um, so yay, not long to go, under two weeks, which is why I'm a little bit stir crazy, I can tell you. We're very, very, very much looking forward to seeing you all in person. And we're really, really hoping that the Orca are going to be up there and staying. Um, so as you see, it's just George and myself tonight. Um, Katie popped in and we'll explain about Katie in a minute. But for now, it is just us. So welcome. Go back. So briefly, what we're going to do is go through very briefly um, just a quick recap of the last session so we know what we're doing. I trust you all got the recording. If not, do let me know and I can send it out to you again or send it out tomorrow. Hoping you've been able to get out and start practicing. We've had some nice, lovely um, sightings in the, the chat. Um, so that's brilliant. So I hope you've been practicing and indeed uh, sending the surveys into Cloudia at Sea-Watch because she would really appreciate knowing your sightings. Um, so a quick recap of the last session and then we're going to move through to George who will be explaining a bit about how to conduct the surveys and how the teams have been put together um, and the watch schedules because I bet you're all very keen to know about that. So we're going to explain how it's been done and George will be sending out that, that those details tomorrow for you. So it will take us to about 10 to 8 and then we'll have a little short break where you can ask any questions if you want to. You can hang around or just go make yourself comfortable. I think some of you had dogs to let out last time. So, you know, all that could help. Um, and then I'll be going into a bit more detail about what to expect once you get to Walker Watch. Now, I know some of you have been before um, way back and every year. Hopefully um, you'll find that this is a little bit different. So please bear with us as we explain the details. Um, and then finally, there'll be time for a question and answer before we finish, hopefully at 8.30ish. So I hope that's OK with everybody. And um, sit yourselves down, get comfortable. And it's over to George. Thank you. Do you want to stop sharing? I, know. I, I just have. Start sharing, hopefully. Yep, that should be a blank screen. Yep. OK, right. Uh, so really, just a quick, first of all, a quick recap on what we covered last time we're not going to go through everything just a couple of things to actually bring out um the citation id quizzes that we did i know some of you uh, excelled at it some of you found it a little bit more difficult um and don't worry about that you will be with a team of people so there's going to be not just you on your own there'll be others so you can discuss together you can um, have a chat, see what you, you think together. And also you've got the, the ID guides in the app, have a, a look through those. The main citations you are likely to see if you wanna concentrate on some are the, obviously the orcas, the minke whales, the rissos dolphins, and also the harbour porpoise are four key ones that you will probably come across. So those are good ones to actually research and have a look at. Um, if you're unsure of what you've seen, all we'd say is don't guess. Um, have a consensus between you. You can always send us pictures. We're going to talk to you about a, a WhatsApp group that we're going to set, set up. And um, you can always send us a picture and ask for comments. That's not a problem. But uh, And in the app, if you're unsure, if you can't be absolutely definite what species it is, but you know it's a dolphin or you know it's a whale, you can just put that it's a, it's a dolphin species or a, or a whale species. And that is far better for us than you actually having a guess. We'd, we'd far rather have the, um, it's a, an unidentified species or unidentified dolphin is far, far better. So hopefully, and it is actually easy when you're out there looking at the sea, uh, those who've been doing it will, will know it's easier than looking at one picture because you get to see them at different angles and um, more than once. So you can pick out the different colours, etc., and, and the fins and the activity and the way they swim. So we covered that. You can always go back and have a look at the, the video on that if on the citation ID as well online. Then we went on to the, the actual data collection. Uh, Robin went through the app and I mentioned very briefly the forms just to highlight a couple of things on that to remind you that the F effort details, boat activity and bird activity, um, just as important. If we can get that down, that's quite useful to know what activity is going on around the cetacean sighting. Um, record the conditions, sea state. Some people have asked about sea state, that sometimes you look one way 
and it's um, you think that's a three or a four, and you look the other way and think, well, it's quite calm over there, it's a two. We would say, look totally around you, and on average, looking all around, what actually is a C, C state overall, because you'll find, especially across the Pentland Firth, that there are a lot of cross currents that will create quite a lot of waves and crests in little particular pockets. But overall, the sea state might be a, a three or a two. So um, that's something to keep a look at. We mentioned as well that the, the app is your default uh, recording record. Um, the forms are available. And if anybody wants any more advice on the forms, you can see us in Orca Base and we'll, we'll go through it. Um, but definitely the app on the, the boat is, um, is far, far better because you have to keep, if you're using the form, you have to keep recording the latitude and longitude, which you have to go into the, the boathouse to actually do that. The actual wheelhouse, I should say. So, and actually trying to fill a form in when you're crossing the Pentland Firth on a ferry can be a little challenging because it's not always the calmest of seas. So that's where the app certainly does come into its own. So, um, and the effort, just to, to mark up the effort details are just as important to the sightings. And the app gives you that reminder every 15 minutes to update it. So just a quick recap there. And um, if there are any more questions on that, you can let us have them. Uh, any other things that came to mind if you've been out and practiced and got questions from that. But really what we want to do is to move on to actually getting the job done, doing the surveys, what's, uh, what's going to happen, etc. So that, first of all, let's have a look at the teams and what we've done with teams. I said you were not going to be on your own. And um, we've set teams up and I'm going to send out an email tomorrow which will give you all the details of the team that you're in, and also when those teams are on watch and where they're watching. We've tried to give you different places to watch at, and we've not tied you up all, all the, the whole of the day. We've given you some free time as well within that. So uh, everything that I'm gonna say now for the next few slides will also be in the email. So you don't have to rapidly write everything down that's on the slides. So when we put the teams together, we've we, some of you requested to be with people um, on, on watches and we've tried to actually do that. I think there's only a couple of instances where we haven't, where the people you've asked to be with actually aren't on the, on the observer scheme. So, but the, if they're there, they're more than happy to, more than happy to join you. That's absolutely no problem. Um, just that if they go on the ferry with you, obviously they would need to pay and we'll cover that later on. So in each team, we've put together at least three members in each team. And at least one member is um, going to have some cetacean surveying experience because there are quite a lot of people who haven't actually done this before. So um, we put one experienced member in each team. And I say at least three. Some teams will be slightly larger because of the, the availability of people during the week and across the week. So although there might be five people in your team, um, not everyone's available every day, which um, in the email I send out on the schedule, you'll be able to see where your team members are actually available, which days they're going to be there with you. You'll also have contact details so you can get in touch with each other and uh, talk to each other and if you can share transport that would be obviously be great i know that people without any motorized transport uh, we've tried to place them in teams where volunteers have said they've got space in their car or their vehicle and they're willing to take people so uh, if you're worried about getting around we've tried to place you in a team where you, you should be able to get some um, transport within that so uh, that's what we've done in setting the actual teams up. The watch schedule itself, <clears throat> we've, again, we tried to build it around your availability. Remember we asked in the questionnaire that went out to start with when you were available, what days you were there. And um, everyone who requested a boat survey has at least one return ferry trip, which is over to Orkney, 
from John O'Groats and back again, and a night also a 90 minute wildlife cruise. Um, some people who were there for a longer period um, will actually have been scheduled for two of those. Um, so you, you get four trips in total. Um, the, when you're scheduled for the boat, you'll find that the, you're on the ferry and the following wildlife cruise. So it's either a morning or an afternoon. So you'll get, you'll be on the boat for that period for both of them in one day. The um, next slide, if I can bring it up. Yep. Yeah. So what we've done, you, you offered us days. We've not tied you up, as I said earlier, for the whole of that day. We've just taken 50% of your time and um, either use the morning or the afternoon uh, of that day, because that then gives you the opportunity to go to other watch sites as you want, meet other people, take additional boat trips, because it, it's really, boat trips are really useful for seeing cetaceans, especially getting across to Orkney and back. So we've timed the watches so that you should be able to get back from the watch site to get the ferry or to get the wildlife cruise. If you're on in the morning, you should be able to get back for the afternoon. So um, hopefully that will happen. Sorry, the surveys themselves, we've concentrated around the Duncansby area, Duncansby Head uh, and down to Thurso. And that keeps you close to the base and close to the ferries and the wildlife. We have got some more remote sites, which normally we would do watches and surveys from. Um, However, it's quite a long way to travel. Some of them are a round trip of 50 miles. <clears throat> that might depend on where you're staying. You may want to volunteer to do some of those. And what we're gonna do is put up a Google sheet with um, some of those sites on. So if you want to sign up for them uh, for times when you're actually off um, formal survey, that's absolutely fine. You can do that. Um, one thing I would say, is that any, um, any survey, the schedule is a plan, but we also have um, John O'Groats weather to contend with. And you may recall from last year on the live events that quite often we had mist coming in and sometimes it was quite windy. So it wasn't very, um, watching the sea conditions were sort of uh, good for it. So these, are, these will be the planned watches we're sending out, but they are very much weather dependent. We're hoping that we're going to get <clears throat> wonderful weather. I mean, today, as I was traveling back, we, my wife had a, a Facebook reminder that came up that actually said, with a photograph of glorious sunshine at Duncansby Head, and that it was today, three years ago, that Orca Watch started. So... Um, it was quite a good reminder, but and it was a beautiful day. I have to admit it did cool down a few days later and it did get a bit misty and wet in 2019. But uh, hopefully the, uh, the weather will be good to us and kind to us. You, um, Hannah will talk later about collecting things from the base and two of the things you'll get uh, in your pack is a high vis vest <coughs> and a beanie hat. Um, and uh, we want you to wear those when you're on survey and also when you're on the land or on the boats because it makes you easily recognizable especially to the ferry operators that you're the you're the the official uh, observer and the more of that in a minute and also to the public because from orca base we will be sending the public to come in we'll be showing them the sites that people are at and doing watches and sending them to you so they may well come and um, see you and talk to you and catch up with you. So uh, if you were the high visits and the beanies, that would be great for us. It helps people spot you. So that's the schedule. So digging a little deeper into this, this is where you gasp and say, you want me up at that time? Um, well, cetaceans get up early and go to bed late. Um, so the land survey time is what we're planning for is that in the morning uh, from, you would have either a morning survey or an afternoon survey. And if you take the morning, first of all, we're saying between 8.30 and 13.30, half past one, 
um, we'd like you to run a couple of two hour surveys. And um, we suggest you have a break in between because um, it's two hours is an optimal time really for watching. Your eyes can get quite tired looking at the sea and you start to see things that actually aren't there. So, uh, and looking through binoculars can be quite tiring as well. So we should, our suggestion is that you do a two hour watch, have a break, because the other thing we'll tell you is that, and you probably already know is some of the sites, there's not a lot of facilities. So we give, give yourself an hour, go and get a break, have a, have a cup of tea, find some toilets um, that are local. We'll be giving you some details about the different sites and what is available and what isn't available. That'll be in your pack, which you, you'll be picking up from the Orca base. <clears throat> so in the morning, we're looking for you yeah, 8.30 to 13.30, you do a couple of watches within that. And then another team will take over in the afternoon. Again, doing similar, two more watches with an hour in between, in between, sorry. And um, that basically, it, it maximizes the opportunity across that area between Duncansby and Thurso. We're spotting a lot of the time, it gives us great data for that period. And um, it also <clears throat> reduces the time spent in traveling because normally you would have a two hour watch, then another team take over for two hours, then another team for two hours. And we're trying to cut that sort of travel down. So, um, which again is why we're sticking to the sort of Duncansby Thurso area to start with. And a lot of the sightings have been seen um, in the mornings early and in the evenings as well. So um, hopefully you getting up early will be repaid. And, um, but if you do have any problems with that, talk to me, uh, send me an email when I've set the schedule out. I'll ask you for any, any issues anyone's got just to uh, come back on that. Okay, the boat surveys that I mentioned, as I said, every, everyone that asks for one should have at least the ferry and the wildlife crews. And the timings are fairly similar for the land watches. The morning ferry leaves at 8.45. So we suggest that you get to the, the quayside at 8.30 because the ferries do get, if you've not been before, the ferries do get extremely busy. We will try and get you at the head of the queue, um, but um, can't guarantee it. It depends how many people crush on before, but we will try and get you on, uh, which is why it's important for you to have your um, high-vis jack jackets on as well. But the morning goes 8.45, goes across to the Orc to Orkney, and then is, is back probably about 10.15. It can be a little later, depending on tides and the current. So you've got a short break then before you do your wildlife cruise. So you can always, there's a the kiosk there is on, on the pier there. You can get a drink or something to eat. And there are toilets there at John O'Groats as well. And um, then you've got your wildlife cruise, which leaves and is back for, for 12.30. Again, be at the quayside a quarter of an hour before the boat is due to go. The afternoon one, it's... Um, 14.30 is with the wildlife crew. So you do it the wildlife cruise, then the ferry in the afternoon. Again, quarter of an hour at the quayside. This one is a little bit tighter. You get back at 1600 and the ferry goes at 16.15. And if you, you will not miss it because it's the same boat going out, um, but it might be a quick loose stop um, or a quick um, drink from the, the kiosk. Okay. You'll notice the time in the afternoon, 14.30 is later. Um, sorry, the, the time, 16.15 of the ferry to 18.15 is a little longer because the ferry, when it gets to Orkney, actually waits for the bus to come, um, the, the tourist bus, and loads on from that. So it's a little later getting back. So that journey is a bit longer. But if you, whilst you are in the harbour at Orkney, Keep your eyes peeled because that is one area we have seen we have seen um, orchid come into. We've actually spotted them with scopes from Duncan's behead there. So uh, don't don't stop looking um, for orca once the ferry gets in. Keep your eyes peeled for those. Um, 
just a couple of other points we've got on the Saturday there's no formal land watches scheduled for the Saturday but we do have boat surveys for that Saturday the 28th which is the first one um, if for some reason you cannot do those tell me as soon as you can when you see the schedule um, but obviously you need to most people will be collecting their packs and their kit from uh, the orca base on the Saturday for those of you who are on the one the actual um, ferries and the um, wildlife cruises on Saturday morning you may want to collect them on the Friday we will be there on the Friday but we would appeal please just the people from the Saturday um, who will go on that first Saturday everybody else come the next day on the Saturday to collect them from us so Friday is purely for those going on those first cruises on the Saturday and first ferry rides um, so there's no land watches Saturday um, and of course that night we've got the, um, the evening of talks in, in Wick. A couple of points about being on the ferry uh, as part of the part of the official team you are given free passage the ferry company have been very generous to us they've given us three places on each ferry and each wildlife cruise so you have free passage on those that you're a survey a surveyor on otherwise you need to book and pay for your passage and if any friends go with you obviously they need to pay and book the normal scheduled ferry will be offered at a discount price to those who've got the orca watch wristband as an official volunteer you will get one for free <clears throat> anybody else that wants one has to buy them at 15 pounds correct me if i'm wrong hannah but i think it was 15 pounds and i'll be covering the, that in a bit yeah good and um the ferry company um, I've just made those tickets available. The reduced tickets are available online, so you can pre-book them before Orca Watch. Um, but they've assured us they will be checking also for the wristband. So if you've got a discounted ticket, you must have your wristband to go with it to get onto the boat. So they have just released those, so you can book. But can I suggest you may want to wait for the email tomorrow to see when you're scheduled to be on whether it's a land watches or boat watches before you um, book the actual any, any additional ferries. Wildlife cruises can also be booked in advance. Um, they are a, a reduced rate of £15. Obviously, if you're surveying on the wildlife um, cruise, you are your passage is free. Uh, any other time, you're going to need to pay the 15 And that is whether or not you have a wristband. That's for everybody all the public everyone so it's 15 pound for a 90 minute wildlife cruise um they have been on been able to book those for a couple of weeks now so if when you get the schedule you find that um you're at you've actually booked a wildlife cruise already that you're we've scheduled to um survey on then if you let us know the ferry company have said that they will arrange for a refund because your passage will be free as a surveyor. So check that when it comes through. So again, I suggest you leave your wildlife booking until the schedule comes out tomorrow morning. Um, OK, the a couple of general points about surveying and a couple of tips really on, on watching. We suggest that um, you assign roles to different people. If there's a team of three, someone to actually use the app, and then two people perhaps looking to the uh, ahead and 90 degrees to the left, and the other person looking ahead and 90 degrees to the right. So you're covering separate parts. And we suggest swapping the roles about 60 minutes uh, would be uh, quite useful. That helps. It means you're not submitting, if it's only 60 minutes, um, sometimes people swap at 30 we suggest 60 and then you're not uploading as many surveys um it's one survey every 60 minutes so you will, you will be uploading from the app which helps us when we're collating all the data um that evening take a break as we mentioned earlier on we suggest <clears throat> two hours being the optimum and take a break after that it will be good for you 
Public engagement. <clears throat> you will find people coming and asking what you're doing, um, passers by. You'll find people coming that we've sent uh, from the Orca base. Engage with them by all means and, and tell, tell them all about the citations, about Sea Watch, about the event, and encourage them about the base as well if they haven't been to come and see us. But also, please keep watching. It's um, Don't get too distracted. And there's nothing wrong in apologising to them, pointing out that you're still watching while you're talking to them. We often do this um, when we go on ferries and cruises, people will come up and uh, we talk to them, but we just say, I'm just keeping my eyes out. I'm not ignoring you. I am listening. And that's sometimes worthwhile. Um, <clears throat> sightings. When you see a sighting, yeah, when you see your first orca, yes, you'll shriek, shriek you will shout, um, and you'll keep looking and following, but the data needs to be priority. Hit, as soon as you see something, hit the sightings button immediately. And then whoever's doing the app, go to the person that's been, um, has actually spotted the sighting and get the data from them. So get that down. It's difficult. Uh, sometimes because yeah people want to point things out where they are and if you've got public there try and show them where they are if you're if you can see how far they are it's often good to use the horizon uh, or the nearest island and say it's halfway to the horizon it's a third of the way to the horizon and use the the clock from straight ahead being 12 o'clock if it's to the left there you've got 10 o'clock nine o'clock uh, one o'clock, two o'clock, give them some indication uh, as to where you've seen the sighting. Some of them may well be quite obvious. If you see a minky whale, it could be obvious. If you see a harbour porpoise, it will be harder to see uh, the second and third time when they, when they come up. So please, yeah, make sure the data gets down. <clears throat> WhatsApp. We are going to set up um, a WhatsApp for you. Um, that will be done in the next few days. And a WhatsApp rules, there will also be a second official WhatsApp, which Steve Trullock will be running, which is for sightings and sightings only, um, which you, you can get onto Steve's, <coughs> um, onto Steve's WhatsApp group by talking to him. You'll see him at the, the event. You'll see him at the, um, the actual evening of talks as well. Uh, for hours, I will set it up. I'll just take a drink. And also, Steve will be advertising his WhatsApp group <clears throat> on Facebook. So if you're on the Facebook, he'll be publishing the next few days to say he's setting this up and to invite you to join it. So I'm just giving you a heads up. And um, as I say, if at least one of you has something in his sightings group, then you can all keep informed with it. Yeah. And the reason it says in the slide, though, WhatsApp rules, is because if you don't obey the rules, you will get that you you will be told so. <laughs> and it is for sightings that one, and for us as well, you will be told so. The rules are for hours. Um, if you're unable to survey for any reason one day, uh, whether it's weather, whether it's illness, and the survey is not going ahead, then please tell us on the WhatsApp group, or we will actually also have an Orca Watch dedicated mobile number which uh, Hannah will give details of, I'm sure, later, I hope. <laughs> and um, But let us know, because we can strike it off for the day of the watch if it's not taking place, and we won't send people there. So please let, use it for that. If you've got any issues, uh, any problems, contact us on the WhatsApp. Any questions you've got, use it for that. And um, also, one thing we would ask you to do on it is the end of your morning surveys and the end of your afternoon surveys, just give us a quick summary of the sightings. All we want is the species you've seen and the number. And you can get that from the app uh, quite easily before you actually submit, um, you, before you upload it. So if you send us that, it's a good backup for us. The moment we are supposed to be getting the information off the app, down to Orca, Bay, Orca Watch Base, um, but IT being IT, uh, we don't always trust it. So it would be good to have your backup of that because each evening we're going to be doing a live online event and we'll be saying what's been seen, etc. So if you could let us have 
at the end of the survey of the morning or the afternoon, just let us have a quick summary on the WhatsApp group, if you would. Um, the, the, it's the WhatsApp group, if we can keep it clear of chit chat, it's not a chit chat one, feel free to set up your own team ones, no problem there, you can talk to each other, uh, but keep this one basically for those things that I've mentioned there, unable to survey, any questions, any issues, any photos you want to send us and to let us know what you've actually seen during your survey. And a plea, please remember once you've finished to upload the surveys uh, as soon as you possibly can. It may not be possible to do it where you are, but depending on the mobile signal. Um, it's not always a good signal in some of the places, so it's fine. But as soon as you get a signal, can you upload it for us? That would be great. Um, and if you're also short of battery at any point in time using your phone for uh, running the app, you can recharge in Orca Base. You can recharge your phones, which I'm sure I'll probably just nick that bit off, Hannah, but um, she'll cover it again later. Okay, um, but yeah, please upload them. That would be good. And even though you haven't got a signal, you'll still get the GPS and so the app will still run. Okay. Um, anything I need to pick up from the questions there, Hannah, or not? Sure. Oh, I'm just have a quick think, look at the chat. Um, the only thing I would say um, about the picking up the wristbands for the first Saturday, um, we are going to have quite a lot to do on the Friday. So if you can hang on for the Saturday, that would be really good of you. Um, but obviously, particularly the people on the very first ferry who are surveying or whatever, that would be, you know, need to pick their stuff up. But we will be open from 8.15 on the first Saturday. That gives you at least a quarter of an hour to get down there. Um, as I say, if you come and find us on Friday, we might be a little bit harassed. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are able to hang on, that would be great. But if you really need to pick it up on Friday, then yeah. then you can find us at the base. Yeah. I notice someone's already booked. I'm assuming it's a, it's a wildlife cruise. Yeah. yeah, let's hope it works out. If not, get in touch with us and we'll see. We'll, we'll yeah. sort things out for you. Read, okay. read the lift sharing, um, lateral flow tests. I don't think you really need to now, but if you are more comfortable with that, or if you want to make that as a condition, if you're if you're driving someone somewhere, then by all means. You can, again, if people are more comfortable wearing masks, including the driver of the car, again, please do that. I know that we're in a very strange situation whereby it seems to be more rife than ever before, but touch wood, not so great. Um, so have a chat among yourselves. If you are giving yourself a lift, you know, there are no rules anymore, um, not even in Scotland, I believe. I, I think the masks are almost finishing. I'm sure Scottish people will tell me off in the chat if that's wrong. Um, but it's whatever you feel comfortable with, really. Yeah. OK, and on that subject of, um, of health, a couple of things are really on staying safe and uh, a few do's and a few don'ts, really. Um, we have we have done or we will be doing some risk assessments um, of the sites. So if there are any issues, we will, we will let you know. But basically, all we're saying is a lot of it is common sense. Keeping, keeping safe is common sense. We just want to make sure it's common practice as well. And uh, some of the places, accessibility there, some of them it's only after quite a, quite a walk. The Duncan's be stacks, you've got to walk a, a fair bit of a way. If you go to some of the more remote sites, you volunteer for any of those. Um, some of those can be quite a walk as well. I think St John's Point is quite, quite, a, quite a walk. And as we said, as I said earlier, rarely are there facilities. Um, but because we've concentrated in the area ha we have, you're not too far from them. Um, there are facilities in Dunnett Bay and uh, John O'Groats. So they're quite close to the Wu facilities in Thurso as well. So if you need to get a drink or you need to use the toilets, um, that's not too, too far to travel. Um, Warm clothes, layers, st yeah, stay warm up there. I mentioned earlier about the John and Groats weather. Yes, it can be glorious. I remember the start of 2019, I was in t-shirt and shorts. Uh, I think I had three fleeces 
I could go um, thick trousers, waterproof trousers, etc. by the end. It can get very cold, so keep layers with you. And sensible shoes, no flip-flops, no high heels, and um, just, yeah, it's common sense. Uh, some of the places, yeah, can be, the, the ground can get quite damp. And if you have any accidents, any falls, any trips, um, can you please let us know? Because we do need to record it. Uh, this isn't an official observer screen, a scheme, so we do need to know about anything like that. So, uh, and if you have any issues, if you're concerned about anything, then please, please raise them with us, uh, either direct uh, or via the, the WhatsApp group. And um, we've already mentioned about maybe having to cancel depending on weather. If it's windy, if it's throwing it down with rain, we don't want you to get hypothermia. So, you know, please don't go unless you've got all the right gear and you want to go and, you've, and you're safe to go. Again, use your common sense with that and talk about it as a team. Do you think it's, it's really safe to be up there? And if it's, if it's really high winds, yeah, anything seven and eight winds, you gale force, you certainly shouldn't be on the headlands. And finally, don't climb fences. Um, we've, worked, we've worked hard with the local communities and uh, we have good relationships with them and you will find fences in places. And um, yeah, you see the orca, you see the cetacean, you want to get closer, but all we ask is please, please don't climb the fences. Um, there will be notices up in places. Um, and the fences are the yes, one for your safety, but also to protect there are birds on the cliffs there are birds nesting in the grassy areas so there are there are reasons for those fences being there so uh, as close as you want to get to the orca um, use your binoculars uh, and don't climb the fence please is what we would ask okay that really is it from me for now am i i'm just about on time i think aren't i uh, which is unusual for me um if you've got any questions about what i've said um, feel free to put them in the chat. We're going to take a break in a minute. Um, so if you, if you think of anything, most of what I've said about the watches, how we've organised them, um, the times, etc., will be in the email tomorrow, will be repeated in there. And as I say, you will get the schedule and you will get the team that you're, you're with. OK. Do we want to take a quick break, Hannah? I think that would probably be good. We're running a little ahead of time, which is great. I, well, I hope everyone's comfortable with that. And um, yeah, take it, take a quick break, maybe 10 minutes. 10 minutes. That. Yeah. Back at um, 10 to. Yeah. But yeah. if you have any questions, you know, want to hang around, put them in the chat or whatever, that would be great. Um, I'll be sitting here most of the time. Um, if you would like to stop sharing your screen as well, I can flip over. Oh, we're smooth yeah. operation, aren't we? <laughs> oh, I can see everybody. Forgot about that. I know, I forgot about sharing a screen. Um, but yes, so please go and feel free to go and make yourself comfortable or to chat in the break. I mean, when it comes to um, mask wearing and everything else, as I say, it really is to do with what you feel comfortable with and what the locals feel comfortable with. Um, so it's just respecting people's comfort things really i know we said in the code of conduct that um you know if there are any rules in place fine hopefully we won't get to that stage again we will have sanitizers we will you know we're a bit unused to being friendly with people aren't we so <laughs> so you know whatever you feel good with really is all we can say which is a good position to be in touch wood um but yes car share is entirely up to you what you want to do and, and how how much you want to wear masks and things sadly we haven't got any um orca watch masks because we hoped that that would be not necessary mm. sanitizer we've probably got um what else mm -mm -mm. yeah great great shout out for cheesecake at the cabinet john O'Groats, george i think if anyone wants to bring some to the base for us <laughs> that would be absolutely marvelous um the cabin are very great uh, they are giving people a discount if they wear their wristband also um and we'll put this in the packs but when you're out and about um near bruff bay 
Um, Windhaven Cafe um, is run by our regional coordinator and she is more than happy to give a discount uh, for a certain amount of spend. And um, Highland Haven, which is towards that way as well, is operating a pop-up cafe during your watch. So nice place to go and have a picnic if the weather's nice, have some food. All those will be published on Facebook in due course, um, but little bits of information um, for you in terms of getting tea and coffee, which might be necessary. I think um, the loos, I, I can't remember. I think the, the loos in, in John O'Groats, and if, um, I'm sure someone local will be able to tell me, but I think they're um, donation, aren't they? I think it's, um, they would like you to pay some money, but um, as a donation, but I think if you, you can actually use them for not, um, that's the last time I saw. Uh, yeah, that was the last. Yeah. I'd seen, yeah. But I think you have to pay for the car park now, I think, if John O'Groats. I think you do. Again, yeah. I think it is a, um, I think there are wardens occasionally. Mm. Um, certainly, one of the reasons I'm going up slightly early is so I can go and check what's going on in terms of notices and car parking and overnight camping and all that sort of thing. So um, we should be doing that. Um, as we say, the ferry company is brilliant and they, they give the generous discount um they don't you know expect us to pay for that that is what they do to support the event and it's amazingly good of them <laughs> um yeah don has just said all the car parks are charging now john groats are most of each car park so yeah right okay yeah good to know in a way i mean it's unfortunate because obviously um i think i mean this was uh, charging on car parks and things were starting to come in before covid um, but then I think um, my understanding is it all got a bit sort of stressy during COVID and when we had um, bits of release and bits of not release again. So I think the time has come and I think they've sort of thought, yeah, tighten it up. It's um, happening everywhere, I think, sadly. But there you go. Um, what else was I going to say something? It's a lovely walk. Oh, yes, I bet your dog walks become very expensive. Um, it's a lovely walk up to the stacks as well, um, which is nice. You don't always have to drive up there. Um, is, Dun is Dunnet Bay still free? Anyone? Donna might know. Anyway, we will be giving those information up and, and that's part of the point of the hub as well is to have that sort of information so that people know what they're doing. Um, Donna, do uh, in the chat, do the car parks um, expect coinage? If you could answer that in the chat. Oh, definitely no drones. Um, we, mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, because... Especially around Duncan's because there's a lot of birds nesting there, a lot of puffins, yeah. yeah. And Dunnet Head and Strathy Point, if you get as far as Strathy. So sadly, no dones. Okay, so um, we'll find out about our parking fees, but um, there's an app to use, as there always is nowadays, which must be fun. Um, yeah, good idea, Kath, waterproof phone case. Plastic bags work quite well as well, but not so good for the touchscreen. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I have a um, one off my bike, which has a screen on the front. You just put it in. They work quite well. Actually, on the, on the survey times, I mentioned 8.30. If anybody wants to get there earlier, you are absolutely welcome to do so and start earlier. <laughs> Remember <laughs> the card stay later. <laughs> Remember the cardinal rule of surveys, though. You don't start one just because you see something. Correct. You, and you start don't... the survey, then you look. Yep. Yeah, and you don't continue just because you're seeing something in theory, but <laughs> don't know how we stand with that, George. <laughs> um, if they're in the area, you probably carry on surveying if you want to. <laughs> Strictly remembering what people would say. Um, but no, I mean, hopefully, hopefully there'll be lots to see and the birds are amazing. Um, I think Ida were at um, Berwick Harbour as well. I think I've seen Ida at... at the Orkney Harbour, which is nice. Um, oh, yes, okay. Um, hang on. 
Post Cave the John and Great's base. Indeed, I will. Um, um, hang on. This shouldn't be beyond my wit and intelligence, but uh, it's it's a bit late in the day <laughs> to check that. Hang on. Um, John. It's the bottom of the, as, as I'll say in a moment, it's the bottom of uh, the unit John O'Groats, which is not helpful in terms of a postcode. Um, but it is, here we go. Uh, directions. Bear with me, cooler, as they say. My directions aren't helpful, it's not the postcode. Okay. Oh, you'd think I'd know how to use a <coughs> phone by now, wouldn't you? Location. Oh, here we go. Um, really? Hang on. Sorry. Yeah, I think KW1 4YR, but I will check. Yeah, mine's not coming up. Yeah, I think it's KW1. Um, I will find out and put that on the thingy on the Facebook as well, 4YR. But basically, you, you just follow the road until it runs out. It's not far from the ferry, is it? No, I mean, it's right by the John O'Groat sign post. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very, you know, it's quite easy to find and say just go on till the road runs out uh there's a car park in the middle um i've got it kilo whiskey <laughs> one kw1 kilo whiskey one for yankee romeo for yr marvelous it is the same one good um yes if you do end up in the sea you definitely have gone too far um <laughs> But it is a very, um, we're very privileged to have have that space. It's um, a very obvious building, iconic building. Um, so it should be fairly easy to find. Actually, just thinking when, when, about being in the sea, uh, when you're surveying on the boat, on the, on the ferry, um, you'll find, you may find somebody else spots the orca uh, or spots the station. So see if you can get hold of this, see if you can get, find out who saw it, what they saw, and get the info off them as well. Because you'll be in teams, obviously one of you can mm. stay focused on just seeing it for yourselves, but then mm. other people can, you know, get the mic out, get the flashlight out and interrogate them until they give the mm. information. <laughs> and it has been known for um, things to happen whereby if there are orc in the area, it has been known that the ferry company could be persuaded to hang on and not yeah. perhaps make their scheduled return. <laughs> so you need to be a little bit prepared for that. Okay, so, right. Okay. Um, what else? Sorry, I'm not able to do two things at once anymore. Um, <laughs> yes, indeed, Kath. I think we're on the same ferry in 2019. If that was 2019, definitely on the same ferry. I think there was one bemused um, traveller who had come over from Berwick, who then basically got hijacked on the ferry for a long time. But it was good. I mean, you know, that's what we're there for. But. Um, if it was the car ferry from Scrabster, that might have been a bit more problematic, I would have thought. So I, I think it's about time, maybe, uh -huh. she says, having to stretch, getting a bit concerned about this. So I'm going to be sharing with you <laughs> the delights of what to expect at Orca Watch. So here we go. Oops. There you go. So these are the, I'm hoping you're seeing this. Welcome back, everybody. I'm hoping you're seeing this. Are you seeing this, George? Yeah, we can see it. Marvellous. So what to expect? Well, basically, let's just quickly introduce the people who will be manning the team. Um, obviously, myself and George, who you've met already, um, and then helping us staff the base, and we'll talk about the hours soon. 
Um, we're going to have um, Neil Parkinson and Anne Boyer. You can probably tell from the the names that there may be some relation to to myself and um, George. And they have very kindly decided to give up their time as well because there's no getting out of it otherwise. I've heard about Orca Watch for the last three years. Um, but they also both in independently volunteer for um, Sea Watch as well. So they're joining us to man the base. And Katie, who some of you were introduced to earlier, um, is our communications and outreach officer for Sea Watch Foundation. And she'll be in the base too. Um, and then out and about, hopefully, um, I was about to say going over the cliffs, but I mean going along the cliffs and um, on the ferry, you'll probably come across Steve. And I'm sure any of you who've been to Orcwatch before or have been following on Facebook all know Steve. Um, and Riley, his dog, and um, Claire Boardman, who is our regional coordinator, will also be out and about um, on the ferries. She's got her own visitors as well, taking part and, and local watchers. So those are your friendly, friendly faces of, of Orca Watch. And um, we are so looking forward to seeing you all in person. So new for this year, is the fact we've actually got a base. We're very excited about this, as you can probably tell, because I keep talking about the base, um, because it just means you can actually find us, which sort of helps, I think, if you've got any issues, problems, just want to chat, warm up, etc. So as you can see, it's right by the newly cleaned up signpost. They replaced the John O'Groat signpost about three years ago, I think, so it's no longer covered in stickers. Sadly, I think it got vandalized in the first year, but anyway, they've put it back. Um, and you can see behind it is the old in John O'Groats with the new coloured buildings beyond it. And I think that is where the arrow is pointing is one of the windows of the Orc Watch base. And just in case you can't find us, if the weather isn't, you know, blowing a hoolie, there will be a sign outside as well, one of those sort of banners, so you actually know where we are. Um, and it is going to be basically open daily throughout Orca Watch. It's a mere splash away, an Orca breach splash away from the harbour and where you will be, which is great. So we're basically opening from just before the first ferry, so probably about 8.15 every day, till about 6.15, 6.30. Um, George is looking a bit askance at that, but uh, that's that's what we're planning to do. Um, if it gets really quiet, we're not needed, or we just get very annoyed that everyone keeps seeing Orca, we might actually come out and join you as well. But in theory, we're going to be there. If we're not there, there'll be a note on the door with um, emergency contact number, for this very lovely phone I got, um, and I will be giving the number out shortly. Um, but crucially, it's where you can find out what's been being seen, have any issues, give us your data, talk about things, kick back, that sort of thing. Um, but it is also where you need to come on the first Saturday or when you arrive, if you're arriving later in the week, to pick up your very important or Orca Watch official observer pack. And this gives you all you need to conduct your watches and it includes the all important wristband. Um, so there you go. What we'd also like you to do um, is if you've got any sightings, photos, video, you can come and upload that from the base. Um, it's where you can pick up your high vis and your beanie. Your beanie will be in the pack as well, high vis. Um, we will want your high vis back at the end. I think you won't be that upset about that, but the beanie is yours to keep. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns, that's where you can find us. Out of hours, as I say, it'd be nice to you know have some time off, but we have got an emergency phone if you need it. Um, it's also where we'll be selling our limited edition Orca Watch merchandise, if there's any left after the evening of talks. Um, it's a good place to warm up and subject to reasonable usage, as the phrase goes. It's somewhere where you can actually um, charge your mobile phone as well. I think Kath had mentioned in the chat that the portable batteries are quite good, which they really are. But if you get stuck, you know, do come onto the base and, and give your phone a bit of a, a charge if you need to. Um, extra forms can be collected there. You know, just come and chat and see what's going on, see what the sightings are. Um, and at the end of most days, as we'll see in a minute, after we close the base at about 6.15, 6.30, we'll then be preparing to go live to um, broadcast what we've seen during the day. So that's all going to be um, a very interesting thing. Just a bit more new observer pack. Um, basically, it's all attached in this rather, well, we hope you like it, um, sort of a tote bag. So you'll get a crib sheet on ID, um, 
which will help you if you know the, the app is fine but it's also sometimes useful to have something big and laminated in front of you, you get stuck uh, ditto with the sea state uh, sheet obviously the event wristband i can't mention it enough but you're gonna get your event wristband and um excitingly they are in slightly different sizes so you might actually get one that fits a bit more sometimes um so you can choose your wristband size um you see watch beanie recording films and a few other goodies in there too uh, when it comes to the wristband um as i say it's all part of your pack for anyone else it's uh, 15 pounds eight pounds for five-year-olds to 16 year olds and then one pound for a kid but for you observers it's there for you but if anyone asks that's what it is um so we've got a few things lined up in the week. Obviously, as George said, um, most of the time, your time will be yours, you know, half the time doing surveys and watches, and that's what we've all come to do, really. But the rest of the time is yours. So, you know, please feel free. You can cover some of the more, more remote sites. If you're down in Thrumster and you're thinking, you know what, I might sort of go to Libster and observe or Sarklet, that's absolutely fine. Just let us know so we don't sort of uh, duplicate. Um, you can hop on the ferry, hang out with the guys at uh, Dunkersby Stacks and uh, Dunkersby Head, see what's been going on. But there are just a couple of things we'd like you to join in, because um, that would be nice. So here is the programme. As you can see, and as, Je as George has said, we start the ferries on Saturday, but we don't start the land watches until Sunday. And from then on, every day, you've got the ferries and the land watches. And most evenings, if you are back in your accommodation, um, having a bit of a break or whatever, um, you can join the evening roundup live stream from the base. And if you've seen some nice sightings, we might actually ask you to perhaps take part and, and tell the world what you've seen. Um, we also, on the last Friday, for those that you are there, and I'm sorry we can't please everybody, um, there will be a little volunteer get together in the hall to thank you for your time, um, the village hall at John O'Groats. So have a drink on us, kick back, talk about how it's lovely, give us some feedback maybe about how it could be better next year. Like for goodness sake, Hannah, you promised us walkers, where were they? Hopefully they'll be there, but you know. Um, and then we finally close on the Sunday. So just a few things. And after the event, we'll be emailing you a certificate of appreciation and participation, which you can print and frame on your wall to, to acknowledge your very valuable contribution. I mean, even, Good, goodness forbid, even if we don't see anything, we will. But even if we don't, it is still very valuable, the work you've been doing, and that data will still get into the database and be used. So genuine thank you for all you're doing. The other thing to bear in mind is that after we've all gone home and we're just thinking, ah, it's all over now. We saw so many orcas and it's so lovely. Um, we're going to have an evening on the 26th of June online where we'd really love everyone to get back together to find out a bit more about how the data that you guys collected has been used, what we've actually learned from the event, to share some stories and some reminiscence and just look forward to how you can continue to watch throughout the year and also to Watch 2023. This is me being very optimistic, but, you know, short of pandemic, so I think we should be back. Um, so that's a sort of plan i'm just going to do a little bit of a plug if you don't mind for the evening of talks just to explain a bit more about it um it's basically going to be a live event at pulteney hall those of you in 2019 um can probably remember it and we have a few um talks being phoned in and um live recorded so you can see here we're going to have the, um, a little chat about why we were here for Orca watch and then what's going on in orkney and then bearing in mind the fact that the orcas have all been up um, having a little party from Fraser up to Caithness and beyond, um, we are lucky enough to have Hugh Harrop in conversation. Um, you may have seen Hugh's posts on Facebook and on Twitter about the calves that have been seen this year, following up from what we saw last year. So he's going to do a little presentation about that. Going to have an update on um, Ecopreds, which is um, seal predation by orca from Julia Sutherland for those that watched last year um, and in previous years a little update on the science bit about that. Um, we have a talk about how Orca Watch helped um, Dr Chloe Robinson get from being a volunteer and doing her degree to getting over to Vancouver to work with the Vancouver um, killer whales out there so quite a lovely talk about Orca around the world. 
And finally, the world premiere, I killed you not, the world premiere of Trolloc the movie, um, which explains how our key volunteer, Steve Trolloc, um, moved from being a window cleaner to actually getting involved with Orca and sharing his passion for, for Orca and helping people see their Orca the first time. If any of you didn't see any of the programmes from last year, they're all still on YouTube under the Sea Watcher channel and you can get a bit of a feel for it. So basically, if you can get there in person, that'd be absolutely wonderful because you get to see everybody and um, there's going to be a raffle um, with some uh, prizes. Obviously, it's a raffle. Um, so you can choose, but if you win, you can choose between a pair of binoculars or um, a painting, a lovely painting or an orca um, and an orca throw and family membership of Sea Watch. So, you know, there may be some other prizes along the way, but the raffle and the first chance to get your hands on some of the merchandise will be at the evening events plus a lovely bit of talk. It is timed so that you can just about do it um, with a bit of comfort after the last ferry. So if you're already thinking, I'm going to be on the ferry, that's marvellous, but you can head back into Wick and um, have a jolly old time, I hope. You can find out um, how to get tickets from Facebook and also from the Orca Watch pages on the Sea Watch site. So if you haven't already, it would be really nice if, if that was something to do to officially launch Orca Watch. Um, so there you go. And all the merchandise, the souvenirs are going to be featuring the um, fin of Musa, who is one of the most iconic of the, the 19s, the matriarch of the 19 pod. So it's a little bit of a sort of special thing for, for Orca Watch this year. And I think that brings me rather rapidly, I'm sorry, I know I speak way too fast, nervous, to any questions. So what I could do is ask people to put their hand up or to shout in the chat and we could unmute them. What do you think about that, George? Um, yeah, you can try unmuting and put the hand up. Um, or either, do both. Do both, okay. What does do both mean? <laughs> unmute and put them in the chat as well right okay but you need to uh, stop sharing your screen so we can see everyone oh sorry yes that would be a good idea wouldn't it there you go i was wondering why i couldn't see anybody um yeah. so there is the um raise hand at the bottom if you want to ask any questions at all um there haven't been any in the chat none in the chat particularly yeah. just having a quick look I mean, I hope that sort of gives you a bit of an idea. It, it's, it, it's. Um, I don't know. It'll, it'll be fun. I think. I just want to get there now, like I'm sure you do too. No questions. No questions. Stunned you all to silence. You can always direct message as well if you want to, um, or basically. Um, get in touch via the thing. So, okay, contact number. So I've been advised that, you know, um, E or Vodafone works best up in John O'Groats. So we have a little, a little dedicated Orca Watch phone, which will go properly live on the um, Friday, the 27th. And if I type the number in the chat, then... I will do that. Hang on. Sorry. Oh, seven. It is the least smart phone ever, but I thought it would be a good idea because, you know, it's an emergency phone. So 07985277715. Oh, Marker, watch, what line? Um, so do put that in your, your things. If you need us out of hours or, you know, during the day or whatever, that phone should be the quickest way to reach us in the old school method of phoning. A couple of questions about the, the WIC event, uh, mm. Hannah. Uh, is it open to all? Well, the answer to that is yes, isn't it? It it's is. Open to yeah. everyone. Yes. And the other one is about getting tickets. Yes. Do they, cook, do they go to Sea Watch, et cetera? Yeah. Uh, the format for that. Yeah, so essentially, um, as, as in 2021, we're uh, doing tickets through Eventbrite. So there are various ways you can do it. You can go straight to Eventbrite and just search for Orca Watch online. 
and that should bring up the collection of events. It is also, as Evelyn says, on the Orca Watch Facebook. Also, if you are more old school and go to the um, Orca Watch, sorry, the Sea Watch Foundation website, look under Getting Involved for Orca Watch, and you'll see a page about Orca Watch um, Evening of Talks. And so all the links are there to get to it as well. Not trying to make it complicated, really. It's just we haven't sadly got the resources to do it all in person and manage that as well, because we are all just volunteers. And um, one from Hannah, probably for me. Um, so apologies, you've got a horrible cold, Hannah, no voice. That's why she's posted. Um, it's really more guidance on whether the weather is too bad or too dangerous. Um, we will put some advice if it's going to be stormy i think what we will do is put some advice on the whatsapp the night before um but basically if talk about wind if you're listening to the weather forecasts if you if you talk about gale force winds of six seven and eight the cliff is probably not the place to be because you probably couldn't um actually survey in those conditions if you remember going back to the last training session sea states of one two and three possibly four of your max and um, if you've got a sea state four you're probably looking at winds of gale force uh, getting up to six and seven so if you listen to the look sorry watch out on the whatsapp and if we think it's going to be too difficult or in the spot that you're in um if you're unsure my, my advice is if you if you're unsure as a team um pull it don't go or, or stop the watch if it gets difficult sometimes it can get difficult during the watch as weather comes in if you do not feel safe uh stop the watch is what we would emphasize but if we see anything coming in we'll put something on the whatsapp and um, there is an app called is it windy hammer yes it's called it, windy yeah. windy.com windy.com that will um give some advice as well which you can check but um, basically, if you want to, if when we're surveying, sea states of one, two, three, and four, if you're over that, over four, it's very difficult to survey and the data becomes invalid really after that. So if you're saying it's a sea state five, start to ask yourself, should I actually be here? And have a look again on the app of the, the sea states, gives you a bit of information and go back to the information we gave you last time. But if you're unsure, talk to us at the Orca base, we can show you pictures of the different um, formats of, sorry, Hannah. And we have um, in your pack will be a, a crib sheet on the sea states. Right, that's what I was going to show. So you can right, go, oh, right. look, there's something <clears throat> there as well. But I mean, as George says, if you feel at all unsafe, don't do it. Really? Yes? Yes. Sorry, yeah. I was just reading the chats. <laughs> <It's been more laughs> if, if you, you know, if you feel uncomfortable yeah don't do it because you're not apart from anything else you're not going to be um concentrating very much <laughs> oh my goodness i'm going to be blown off a hill any moment so if the weather does change suddenly whatever yes you record the weather conditions and give it a break and then resume if you can yeah. katie's asking about driving up the the roads and is is google maps time um do i need to allow more time than google maps um google maps is usually fairly good as I found out tonight, Hannah was panicking when I said I'm stuck on a road and can't get home. Um, it's usually fairly good, um, but be aware that it's it's Route 500 up there, and it does get very busy with camper vans and caravans, so can be slow. And you also get a lot of cyclists as well who are cycling from Lands End to John O'Groats or from other places to John O'Groats. So. I'd give yourself a little bit more time than what Google Maps says. And watch out for walkers who are walking from Land's End on a grid too. They're pretty tired at that stage and maybe not concentrating that much and limping. I know there's some experience. I was going to say you should know. I should know. I limped in John O'Groats and flip flops in there um, about saying unsuitable footwear. Um, there were passing places as well a lot of the time. Um, so when you get the details in your pack about where some of the sites are, it's all been based on google maps with a bit of a generous allowance as well i think um another question from linda about would you sometimes pause a watch if a squally tap shower short and sharp and um, yeah don't um don't get cold and wet uh, if you want to pause it that's absolutely fine but then 
start a new survey. So you will actually finish that survey um, on the app. And then when you restart, start another one. And just remember to upload all the surveys when you've done it. So yeah, it, it makes sense now. Um, I think also, sorry, going back to the driving, um, I think um, Scottish Tourist Board issued a little helpful video about what to expect on the roads around the North Coast 500. And I seem to recall, I think I put a link to that um, on the frequently asked questions all about Orca Watch on the Sea Watch website, just so that people could sort of get a feel for what it might be like. Um, and as George says, sometimes there are big motorhomes and caravans that really shouldn't be on the road and are sort of asked if they can actually reverse for a long distance before they actually go on that route. So just be a bit careful and allow for time. But again, you know, if you end up starting a bit late to the traffic, that's absolutely fine as long as you let us know. And from the safety point of view, we will be making sure that we do know that, you know, not being, you're all adults, but we do want to know you're, you've safely arrived and have safely stopped because yeah. we'd miss you. Yeah, and there may be occasions when your, your team gets reduced down in numbers, <clears throat> whether it's illness or, or whatever, um, and it, down to two, fine. If it's down to one, yes, you can do a solo watch, but can I ask that you tell us you're there on your own? And then at least we know you're there, we can keep in contact with you as a, as a buddy, if you like. To make you never sure know. Okay. We might actually come out and join you. That if it's was, not yeah. if it's not throbbing down at the hub we might come and sort of you know yeah get some watching ourselves and i should have said actually on the the boat surveys as well that if people can't are unable to do any and drop out of them we will try and give some to the uh, people who've only got one uh, we'll, we'll try and give you an extra one um anything else So I've put a link oh. up to the evening of talks on, on the chat, so hopefully people can find it there as well. Um, yeah, one, one other thing on passing places that sometimes people don't uh, realise is the passing places to allow, not just to get uh, people coming the other way, but to allow local traffic to get past you. Uh, you may be admiring the scenery, um, but you may have a van behind you. Well, pull into the passing place and let people pass. Um, that they're for that let people overtake as well as people coming past you. Just notice, yeah, someone's mentioned about single track up to uh, Dunnet Head and Dunkers being places. Yeah. Okay, any more? No. Do you want me to close off, Hannah? To know, I mean, you know. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I was just making sure that um, there wasn't anything else going on on the chat. Just give me two seconds. Can't spell. Um, so yes, any questions? Any questions? And um, then I just really just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts for giving up two evenings now to to um, yeah. <laughs> learn how to do surveys, which I'm sure some of you know already. Um, but it is important that we all follow the same protocol and to um, hear us talking about what to expect at the base when I'm sure some of you, I know for a fact, some of you are about to set off tomorrow to take their time and have a lovely little wander up there, which is really nice for you. And if you do see anything on the way, don't forget you've got the app, report your sightings um, because that would be fantastic. That's what it's all about really. Um, please do keep an eye on Facebook for any last minute sort of changes or anything like that, but hopefully everything is now pretty much set. But after the last couple of years, you can never say that. Um, also on the Walker Watch page and the Watch website and blogs and Twitter and everything else. But safe journeys to Walker Watch and honestly, thank you for the bottom of our hearts for being willing to give up your time to collect this valuable data. And I really, really can't wait to meet you all at the hub. So or the base. So please do come and say hi and get your stuff. And not just do that, but just come and hang out occasionally and tell us what we've been missing. Yeah. Great. Fully, fully agree with that. And um, <clears throat> just a quick reminder, <clears throat> don't forget to bring the important things, <clears throat> your camera, your binoculars, your scope. Um, <laughs> and also before you come, download the Sea Watcher app if you haven't done so already. 
So uh, that's going to be vital for you. We're not aware of any updates coming soon, so uh, <laughs> no. it would be good. And I mean, you know, the camera, the scope, a lot of it is also just living in the moment. We're more than happy to keep eyewitness, um, eyewitness stories as well. You don't have to have a massively wonderful picture. It does help for ID, but um, we also want sort of people to enjoy it and be in the moment too. Yep. And That's a reminder, that's right. <laughs> oh, no. Um, a reminder then that after this tomorrow, I'll be sending out an email which will have a, <clears throat> a link to the recording for this, if you want to listen again. Um, and also the schedule of watches and details of your team. So um, a few days after, I'll, send, I'll add you to the WhatsApp group so you'll get that as well. And um, I think that's about it. And I just echo what um, Hannah said, that thank you for putting so much into this and, and giving your time up. That's just great.